Here are the five best free Notion templates to master productivity overnight. And yes, I'm slightly biased because they're all my templates. They are all completely free. There's a link in the description to each of them. Let's go through them. So this first one here is called Basic OS. And this here is the perfect way to get started with Notion if you are completely new to it. So it's built around this idea of time blocking, also known as time boxing or daily scheduling. Now I've designed this to be a genuinely productive workspace. Mostly you'll be working in the uncompleted or unscheduled tabs. And under uncompleted, you can see all the tasks that you haven't completed yet. And under unscheduled, you can see all the tasks that haven't been scheduled yet. Now under uncompleted here, we can see task one. But if we tick this in, it gets removed from here. We can still see it here under all tasks. It's sitting right here. And you can see that it got checked in here and it got checked in here. This will be the place here that I add all of my different tasks. So task two, task three, task four, very creative. Anytime I get a new task, I'll add it right here. So after you have your task list, the next thing you want to do is schedule it out. When are you actually going to do these tasks? And we'll start by a day by day basis. And then after we've done that, we'll plan our day. So let's just say uh, task two here, let's do that today. Task three here, let's do that tomorrow. And task four here, let's drag that and do that today as well. So here I can see the tasks I'm going to do today. And here are the tasks I'll do tomorrow. And it gets removed from unscheduled. My goal when I'm working is to have nothing in my unscheduled because if I get a task, I want to know, hey, when do I actually have time to do this task? This is a great habit to get in for your productivity. Now that I've planned my week, the next thing I want to do is plan my day. And that comes down to time blocking. So we checked in this hypothetical task of task one here at uh, 10 a.m. Now let's plan the rest of our day. So we have task four and task two. You know what? I want to do task two before task four. So let's say we'll do this at 11 and then task four here, let's say we do that at three o'clock. So what I'm doing here is time blocking my day. So that's how to use basic OS. It's a very simple notion template, but it's a great way to form the habit of planning out your week and planning out your day. So the next template is called Jot OS, and this is a note taking template. So if I click here on new note, I can take a note, let's call it note one, very creative. And here I'll say blah, blah, blah. And then let's say this project here is to do with project A. So that note appears here under project A. And if I add note two, and let's say it's under project B, and we'll write blah, and now I'll click away, that now appears under project B. So it's separating my notes here under the different type of project. Now, obviously they don't have to be called project A and project B, uh, that's not very useful. So what we'll do is click here, and now I'll rename this. So I'll click on these three dots here, and we're going to rename this to report, for example. So now I have note one to do with report, click away, and you can see here report, note one, blah, blah, blah. And once I'm done with this, and I'm like, oh yeah, blah, 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 I remember that now. What I can do is archive this by clicking that in, and now it's archived and it doesn't appear here. Now, obviously, if I ever want to find that note, I can click here on archive and I can see here note one appearing, but this is now just a simple dashboard for me to find all the notes that I haven't done anything with yet. Now, having this new note up here isn't very useful because, you know, I could just click here to add a new note, note three. So having this here doesn't save me a lot of time. So what you're going to do is actually drag this into your dashboard. So I'll drag this now into basic OS here. So now on basic OS, if I scroll down, I can see this new note button sitting here. So let's drag this up to the top now. So I have basic OS, I have my tasks and everything from before, but now this new note button, if I click here and let's say note four, hello, I've now taken that note without leaving my dashboard. So now if we want to find it, we just go to the Jot OS page and I can find that note sitting here under no project. Of course, if I add a project to it, report, there we go. And then it bounces up here under report. So this Jot OS page now houses all my notes and this button feature lets me take a note without getting distracted with, you know, all the notes on that page. Now I've taken this one step further with my paid template headquarters. That template is built around the world's best productivity methods. And when you take a note in that system, you can actually assign it not only to the project, so it appears on the project page, but it can also show up on a life bucket page. And of course you'll also find it on the notes page as well. So in headquarters, your projects house your tasks, your notes, and also this thing called bottlenecks, but that's not what this video is about. If you want to see the full tour of headquarters, then there's a link in the description. All right, the next template here is the book library. And this here is a really powerful way for you to store your books. So let's just click here on new book. And let's say the book is called Productive. Um, sure. And the author is Mr. Productive. Great. So here we can now add a topic. So obviously this one will probably be about uh, productivity. Who would have thought? So I can add that topic here. I can change the status from want. So by default, it's on want. I can change it to reading or finished. 
I could say if it's been recommended by anyone, just, you know, if I want to see that down the line. And I can also review it. Now, obviously, because this is a want, I'm not going to leave a review because I haven't read it yet. So this is an easy way for me to store all the books that I want to read. So they're showing up here under want. But of course, once we buy it, we might want to change it to reading. And then it's showing up here under reading. And then once I've read it, of course, I can change it to finished. And let's leave it a five star review. It was amazing. And I finished reading it today. Click away. And now it's showing up here under finished. So under all books, this is being broken down by reading, want, and finished. If we click on topics here, it's being broken down by the topic. So let's say you add a new book and uh, the topic is health, for example, and the book is called Get Healthy. I'm sure there's a book called that. And I click away. As you can see, the topic of health has been added here. And of course, under finished, we can see all the books we've finished as well as the rating that we gave it. And this is actually being sorted here by when it was finished reading. So as an example, let's say get healthy. Let's say I finish reading it tomorrow and I change it to finished and we go to finished here. You can see that get healthy appears here. So whatever was finished last will show up here and then the older ones will show up behind it. This is a super simple system for storing your books. In headquarters, there's a similar thing called the resources page and on there you can store your books, but also other stuff such as, you know, courses, podcasts, articles, etc. All right, the next free template is called the shipping list. This is an idea that I've done for quite a while now and I actually track every single day what I've actually shipped. So a shopping list is things that you want to consume. A shipping list is things that you create. It's that simple. So let's say today, let's go very meta with it. The thing that I actually shipped was a YouTube video. So that's the thing that I finished. And down here, you can see some questions. Now you probably won't answer them when you're filling it out here. You'll answer it down here. So this here is your product list. So anytime you think of an idea, you write it down here. So let's say I want to write a book, for example, which I do want to do. Then I can click here and I can answer these questions here. And this will basically help me and understand, is it worth me putting in the effort to ship this thing? Is it worth making this thing and actually finishing it? So why should I make this product? Uh, because I like productivity. How do I make it as high ROI as possible? Maybe make it free and help thousands of people. And then a really useful question, how do I decrease the input as much as possible? use AI to generate images as an example. So these three questions here, I find really, really helpful on whether this product, so a product is just anything you make, whether you sell it or not, you know, at work, if you make a presentation, that is a product, that's a thing that you've produced. So you want to write down all the different things that you want to produce here and then answer these questions here to understand which ones will have the highest return on investment out of 10. So writing a book, let's say that has an eight out of 10, uh, but this YouTube video has a 10 out of 10. Well, look at that, it automatically gets reorganized. So YouTube video bounced to the top again because this here is sorting whatever has the highest ROI out of 10 will show up here at the top. The things that you want to ship first are the things that will have the biggest return on investment. And then let's say tomorrow I'm an absolute productivity god and I write an entire book, then what I can do simply is drag this in here and I manage to write an entire book tomorrow somehow. All right, the last free template here is the meal planner, groceries, and recipes. And this here is a massive template, again, completely free. So what I've done here is combine the groceries and meal planning and recipes all into one simple dashboard. So here you can see all groceries, protein, carbs, veggies, and staples. And what you'll do is simply write down every single different type of staple that you have, every single type of protein that you have, carbs, etc. And when you look in your fridge and you think, what do I need to buy? You simply tick in the things that you need to buy like that. There we go. And now what I've done is formed a shopping list just by checking in these items. So if I scroll up now, I can see shopping. And here under the shopping list, I can see milk, butter, pasta, sweet potato, and eggs. So these grocery items here are showing up under the shopping list. But if you're like me, you probably shop at a few different stores just to save some money. So what you can do here is click on butter, for example, and actually say the shop that you buy at. So let's say shop one. Obviously, if you want, you can rename this to, you know, whatever the store is called. Let's say it's called store. How creative. Okay. So I can say that I always buy butter at this place called store. And let's say pasta here, I always buy at a shop too. So now when I go back to the shopping tab, I can click here on shops and it's actually breaking down for me where I'm going to buy the stuff. So in shop two, I'm buying pasta and eggs. 
in store and buying butter. And then for items that you don't have to buy at a particular shop, you can see them here under no shop. So milk and sweet potato, it doesn't matter where I buy that. This here is a game changer for shopping and it saves me a lot of money because I know exactly what to buy in which store. And then if you scroll down, we can also see our shopping list and we can find that if we scroll down, down here. So we have toilet paper, toothpaste and subscribe. I forgot that I put that there. So if we tick in toothpaste here, and of course you can add different stuff to the uh, brush and I tick that in. If we scroll down, we can see toilet paper, toothpaste and toothbrush. My entire shopping list is on this one page. But now that you've bought stuff like pasta and eggs, what are we going to make? Well, luckily this dashboard, again, completely free, also has your recipes. So creamy pasta, stir fry rice, pancakes, mushroom pasta, and ramen. So let's click on mushroom pasta here. What we can do is assign the groceries for that recipe. So that would be pasta, and then we'll add, do we have mushrooms in here? We don't, so I'll literally just write mushroom, click it in, and then add that. And if I click there on new, I can also write the directions, the serves, and the prep time. Now, when am I going to eat this? Well, at the top here, we have our meal planner. So let's say I'm going to eat that here on Monday for dinner, I'll write mushroom pasta, add that there. So these columns here are connected to your recipes database. Let's say tomato soup, I can add the groceries. Tomato, as you can see, that already exists. So I'll just click in tomato. Let's say it's just made of tomatoes. That appears here. Of course, you can also add a cover by clicking on add cover. We'll just click on unsplash here and search for tomato soup. There we go, tomato soup, click away, and I can see tomato soup here. And then let's say I'll have that here on Monday for lunch. Click, tomato soup, done. So I can meal plan my entire week here. Again, this template is completely free and it's also really useful if you're a headquarters user. Speaking of, if you wanna see the full headquarters tour, click on this video here. It's the ultimate productivity template built around the most useful productivity methods. Click here to watch the full tour. Thanks for watching.